In this lesson, we'll cover how to get good tracking from your cutter. Keep in mind that good tracking will often start with loading the media properly. If the loaded media is at a slight angle, this can cause skewing over longer jobs of 5 feet or more. If you need help with loading the media properly, please review the lesson on CE6000 Operation and Workflow and review the section on Loading the Media. There are three useful options that will enhance the cutter's ability to track well. These options are pre-feed, auto pre-feed, auto paneling, and data sorting. The first function is the pre-feed and the second is auto pre-feed. What these functions essentially do is they will feed the material prior to cutting the job. This allows the push rollers to establish micro tracks on each side of the vinyl as you see here. Once these tracks are established, the push rollers will accurately follow these tracks during the cutting operation. The difference between these two functions is that pre-feed feeds out the material to establish the tracks immediately, whereas auto pre-feed sets the cutter in a mode that, prior to each job being cut, will automatically pre-feed the material to a predetermined length. Pre-feed works very simply. First, press the pause menu key. This will get us into the main menu where we can select the 4 key for media. Then press the 1 key for pre-feed. Next, we set the distance we want the media to be fed by pressing the up or down arrow keys. And then we simply press enter. The cutter will start feeding out the media to the specified length. As it does this, the push rollers will make an impression on the vinyl as a track that it can follow when the job is cutting. As mentioned, the auto pre-feed does this automatically. To enable the auto pre-feed, press the pause menu key. In the main menu, press the 4 key for media. Next, press the 2 key for auto pre-feed. When in the auto pre-feed menu, press the 1 key and this little pop-up menu appears where we can then press the 1 key again to enable the auto pre-feed. And then press the 2 key to establish the pre-feed length. Now we just press the up or down arrow key to establish the length. And then press the left arrow key. Press enter to accept the changes. Finally, press the pause menu key to return to ready mode. Now each time a job is sent to the cutter, it will automatically pre-feed the material to the specified length prior to cutting that section. Turning on the auto pre-feed is a good idea when you're consistently cutting longer jobs. At the same time though, it can be a time waster if you're cutting smaller jobs that don't need the material to be pre-fed. As a general rule, if you find that you're doing mostly smaller jobs, and maybe an occasional longer job, use the pre-feed function. On the other hand, if you find that you're consistently doing longer jobs, or if you have a material that seems to slip a lot, then by all means enable the auto pre-feed function. It may take a little extra time to feed the material, but on the other hand, it will keep the media and the job on track. When working with thicker materials or materials that tend to slip, reducing the speed of the media during the pre-feeding operation may be necessary. For instance, if you find that the tracking is not firmly established to your liking, this is where pre-feed speed should be reduced. To change the speed, press the pause menu button. From the main menu, press the 4 key for media. Press the down arrow key to switch to the second page of options. Press the 1 key to select feed speed. Press the 1 key to set the feed speed to a slower pace. This will allow the push roller to make a better impression on the media for tracking. Press enter to have the cutter accept the change. Press the pause menu key to return to the ready mode. Another function to use for obtaining good tracking is auto paneling. Picture this scenario. You are cutting a stiffer media that tends to slip, causing the media to skew as it moves back and forth. Some reflective materials can be like this. 
Auto paneling is ideal for situations like this. It can panel a job in sections. In other words, it will cut the job one section at a time. This reduces the amount of movement during the cutting operation and thus keeps the media on track. To enable auto paneling, press the pause menu key. Press the 4 key for media. Press the up arrow key to switch to the second page of options and then press the 2 key for panel cutting. To enable panel cutting, press the 1 key. In this little pop-up menu, you want to turn on panel cutting, so we'll press the 1 key. And this will return to the previous menu. Next, you want to set the divide length. The divide length is the length each panel is to be cut prior to moving on to the next panel. To change the value, press the 2 key. And in the pop-up menu, press the up or down arrow key to set the length of the panels. As a note, if you press the fast key, this will change the increments to a higher value. When setting this value, keep in mind that as a general rule, materials that have a tendency to skew should be set for shorter divide lengths. In some cases, you may even want to have the length set to as low as one foot or 12 inches. Once that value is set, then we can press the left arrow button to get this to the previous menu and then press enter to accept the changes. To give a better visual, we flip the media and are plotting on the paper liner. Something to keep in mind with this function is that if another job is sent to the cutter while cutting in the auto panel mode, it could disrupt the auto paneling cutting process. Also, for even better tracking, go ahead and enable the auto pre-feed and the auto paneling. The last feature that will assist in the cutter's tracking is data sorting. It's another avenue to use to obtain good tracking. What sorting does is it prevents excess movement during the cutting operation. What often happens though, especially with longer jobs, is different elements of the design are not cut in order. This produces a situation where the cutter is going all over the place, cutting objects at the beginning of the media, and then traveling all the way down to the end of the media to cut another element. This produces extra and unnecessary movement. Sorting prevents this from happening. Sorting organizes each element so that it cuts in the order that they are laid out in the design, rather than cutting them randomly. This makes the cutting of your designs more efficient and removes the excess movement. To enable the sorting function, first press the pause menu key Press the 1 key for tools. Press the up arrow key to switch to the second page of options. And press the 1 key for data sorting. As you can see, this menu is very simple. All we have to do now is press the 1 key again to turn on data sorting. And then press enter. When data sorting is turned on, the cutter will not immediately start cutting when the design or job is sent from the software. Don't be alarmed by this. What the cutter is doing is taking in all the data of the design and then organizing it before it starts cutting. Keep in mind that data sorting may be a function that is part of the software applications that you are using. So it will be up to you to choose whether you want the software to do the organizing or for the cutter to do it. Either way, it's a more efficient way of cutting.